This video is sponsored by the all new Med School Insiders website. Visit medschoolinsiders.com to learn more. You thought you were done after medical school? Residency lasts anywhere from three to seven years in the US and is the final stage between you and practicing medicine clinically as a fully trained doctor. Let's go over medical school and residency and see how they compare. What's going on guys? Dr. Jubal, medschoolinsiders.com. Check out our new vlog channel for a behind the scenes look at the life of a doctor. Link in the description below. The first key aspect to understand is that in medical school, you are in school. You're a student and you pay tuition to earn your MD. In residency, you're working a job. Congrats, you're now a doctor, but you still need to hone your craft before you're fully licensed, board certified, and can practice on your own without supervision. During the first two years of medical school, you primarily learn in the classroom through didactics and small groups. In the last two years, you are on your clinical rotations where you learn how to apply principles to patient care, tune your ability to work in teams, and practice your bedside manner. In residency, you're no longer a student. You're now the doctor with real responsibility. You take care of your patients and are ultimately the one responsible for their care. All residents require an attending physician to overlook and ensure patient safety. As the years progress, however, you are expected to be more independent and rely less and less on this attending supervision. By the end of residency, you should be ready to take care of patients on your own out in the real world. As for the length, medical school is generally four years. Many students do, however, opt to take an additional year to conduct research or earn another degree, such as a master's. Residency is highly variable in length, and it actually just depends on your specialty. Generally, surgical specialties are longer. For example, the longest is neurosurgery, at seven years, although certain programs are eight years because of a mandatory research year. I matched into plastic surgery, which is the second longest at six years, although a few programs also require a mandatory research year, extending that to seven. Internal medicine and pediatrics are on the shorter end, each at three years. While almost all residencies fall within the three to seven years, certain subspecialties do require additional training in fellowship, which is essentially part two of residency. Next, let's talk about grading and evaluation. While many medical schools are transitioning to a pass-fail grading system for the first two years, it is ultimately still insanely competitive to get into certain specialties. For example, plastic surgery has the highest average step one score, which hovers around the low 250s. Getting the 90th percentile on step one makes you only an average plastic surgery applicant. The second two years are your clerkship years, which are generally graded on a honors pass fail system or some variation of the sort. If you want to go into something competitive like plastic surgery, dermatology, or orthopedic surgery, you'll need to work your butt off to earn an honors grade. Clinical grades are usually on a curve so that only a small percentage of the class can earn them, meaning you have to outshine your colleagues. In this regard, medical school is much more stressful than residency. In residency, the pressure to outperform your peers is an order of magnitude lower. There are no grades. You'll take a yearly in-service exam specific for your specialty and you'll be evaluated by your attendings, but overall it's much less high stakes. Now let's talk about the cost and finances. The most recent figures place the average medical school graduate debt at approximately $190,000. That's right, nearly $200,000 in debt to be a doctor. This includes both college and medical school loans. So I have good news and bad news about residency. The good news is that hey, you'll be making money so you can start paying off your loans. The bad news is that you'll probably be making minimum payments and accruing significant interest since residency salaries are usually around fifty dollars to $60,000 per year. Now I want to introduce my friend and special guest, Dr. David Hinden. He is in his last year of general surgery residency and also has an excellent YouTube channel. Link in the description below. As someone who has been in residency for several years, he knows a thing or two about the differences between medical school and residency. Hey guys, Dr. David Hinden here. Next, let's talk about your work-life balance. One of the biggest differences is how your schedule and time are structured. In med school, you have classes, many of which you can skip and watch online or get notes from a friend. And later, you have rotations where, let's be honest, if you need to leave early or take the day off for personal reasons, it's almost always allowed. But once you reach residency, your free time is no longer totally under your control. You receive a schedule of when you're expected to be at the hospital, whether this is for a daytime shift or 24-hour shift, and that is where you must absolutely be. You aren't just required by your residency contract. 
you have patients whose lives and well-being depend on you. You'll start to discover that your time at the hospital doesn't always end exactly on schedule the way a class would. If I'm operating on an emergency trauma patient and my shift is over, I don't leave the operating room. I stay to finish the surgery and wait until care has been transitioned. And then come the differences in classroom testing. In med school, I remember having constant tests, but in residency, evaluations are much more informal. An intern might finish a surgery and the attending might say, great job, but next time make sure not to pick up the needle with the forceps. All of these are ways to ultimately help a resident improve their skills and clinical judgment. And finally, there are standardized tests. So in med school, you'll take step one, step two CK, and step two CS. In residency, you'll just take step three, then a yearly exam known as the in-service, and finally a formal licensing exam at the end of your training, known as the board's exam. At the end of the day, the most important difference is that being a resident is the first time in your life that you are taking care of patients as their own doctor. It can be stressful, tiring, and even frustrating, but most importantly, being a resident is incredibly rewarding. You've spent years and years of studying and hard work, first to get into a good college, then to get into medical school, and finally to match into a strong residency program. Residency is the culmination of all of that hard work. This is the moment you've been waiting for. You're finally becoming the doctor that you've always dreamed of being. Thank you, Dr. Hinden. Again, you can find a link to his channel down in the description below. For those of you interested in getting into either medical school or residency, check out the all-new Med School Insiders website. We have the resources and tools to help you maximize your chance of success. If you like our videos, you'll love the exclusive blog posts written by top medical students and doctors from across the country. Subscribe to the Insider Newsletter for exclusive insights, updates, coupons, and more. Our team is made entirely of top doctors. We've been successful in our journey and will show you how to do the same. Our team now offers a range of services tailored to you from personal statement editing to application review, interview preparation, research advising, tutoring, and much more. Here's our secret sauce. To provide the best quality results, we pick the best quality advisors. Our highly competitive application and screening process, combined with our proprietary systematic approach, ensures that you get the best personalized service, period. For a limited time, use the coupon EARLYBIRD to get $25 off your purchase of $100 or more. Offer expires April 30th. Visit MedSchoolInsiders.com to learn more. Now that we have a video on college versus medical school and on medical school versus residency, I would love to hear your thoughts on how all three compare. What are you excited about in each step and what are you the most apprehensive about? Leave your comments down below and I will do my best to respond. Thank you all so much for watching and shout out to my Patreon supporters that help make videos like these possible. If you like the video, make sure you press that like button, hit subscribe, and the notification icon if you have not already, and I will see you guys in that next one.